following is a presentation of HBO Sports. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. Coming up November 12, HBO Pay-Per-View will take you live to Las Vegas for the third fight between number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Manny Pacquiao of the Philippines, and one of his most persistent nemeses, Mexican superstar Juan Manuel Marquez. They first met seven and a half years ago. Marquez came in on a 13-fight win streak. He was trying to emerge from the larger shadows cast by his Mexican countrymen, Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. Pacquiao was coming off of an 11th round knockout of Barrera just six months before. They met in Las Vegas for a featherweight title, and what transpired became one of the most memorable and controversial fights of the recent era. Let's take a look at how I called it with Larry Merchant and Emmanuel Stewart. Action on the strip as always, occupancy rate 98%. The town is always hopping, always happening this weekend, no different. Many Mexican-American and Mexican fight fans in town to root for Juan Manuel Marquez. Virtually every Filipino fight fan on the West Coast, no doubt here, to show his enthusiasm for Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao's recent exploits in the ring have made him not just the most famous athlete in the Philippines, quite possibly the most famous of all Filipino citizens. Here in the United States, we'd say that's all good. But in the Philippines, it presents a considerably more complex picture for Pacquiao, as we'll see now on this HBO camera visit to the island archipelago. In the Philippines, where the clocks are 15 hours ahead of Las Vegas time, it's already Sunday morning. And in the summer heat of Southeast Asia, most, most Filipinos are tuned in to watch Manny Pacquiao. During the Barrera fight, Almost every home in Manila was glued to their television sets. Manila Mayor Lito Atienza, one of Pacquiao's biggest supporters, concedes that while Pacquiao fought Marco Antonio Barrera last November, crime fell sharply in his city. Because everybody was busy, including the criminals. <laughs> they shout, idol, as Pacquiao walks through the streets. It's a type of celebrity, not just famous, but beloved, which few boxers anywhere have enjoyed for some time. Pacquiao is uh, the best uh, Filipino boxer. Manny Pacquiao, best boxer. Number one champion. He could do uh, to go up uh, even heavyweight. He could fight. Pac. Following the Barrera conquest, Pacquiao rode through Manila in a ticker tape motorcade. Then enjoyed an outdoor concert held in his honor. In his spare time, he's an action movie star. In advance of tomorrow's election, Philippine President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo sought and received Pacquiao's endorsement. He recently beat her out in another ballot when he was named Filipino of the Year. It's big different now because I, I'm, I'm, I have a money and then I, I'm uh, popular, not before I, I'm walking the street with, with use the sleeper, different color. <laughs> Pacquiao can laugh now about a childhood of mismatched shoes, sharing one bedroom with half a dozen relatives, selling bread, newspapers and flowers in the streets. In a country where one in three lives in poverty and the average annual income is just a thousand dollars, it's that beleaguered childhood struggle that may best explain Pacquiao's popularity today. I think Manny Pacquiao is the hope of a lot of Filipinos. Uh, as you know, we're a third world country. Here is one example of a man who was brought himself out of a position of desperation into a position of prominence. He's like uh, drugs to riches. Like me, I'm a mechanic. My shop is very small. Then maybe I go to the top then. That's like my that. <laughs> but if Pacquiao is good for the Philippines, Many question whether all this attention is good for Pacquiao. I love having him here after he wins a fight. When he has another fight coming up, we want him to get the hell out of here as fast as possible. That's because in the four months following his win over Barrera, Pacquiao stopped training almost entirely. Instead, he basked in the trappings of his charmed life and spent long hours shooting pool. Every day. Six, seven hours. Yeah, too much. Too much time. 
He promised us that from now on he's going to be focused, he's going to kill himself in the gym. Six hours after he made the promise, he went out and came home at 2.30 in the morning. Too many appointments and schedule, and I have uh, many friends here, so I can concentrate on my uh, training. So Manny Pacquiao trains in the United States, where the distractions are fewer and the notoriety is negligible. Big difference because uh, when, I'm, uh, when I'm in the States, I can go to the malls and I can walk down the street. <laughs> it's nice. Nice because it's a break from the crush of expectations back home. Manny Pacquiao is a national hero, and heroes have obligations to their countrymen. So as Pacquiao walks into a Las Vegas arena tonight, he knows back home under the brewing midday sun, the barbers, the street vendors, the mechanics are watching. And for the many there whose life savings couldn't buy a ringside seat, some part of their pride, their hope, rests on Manny Pacquiao's 126-pound frame. A lot of people have different opinions on how Manny should conduct his life. All I'm saying is that he's a very intelligent person. He knows what is at stake every fight that he gets into. Manny Pacquiao is not just a man for himself, but a man for all Filipinos. The excitement of Pacquiao's story in the Philippines is matched perhaps only by the audacity of his promotional team. Larry, in November, he knocks out the great Marco Antonio Barrera in a fight in which he was the betting underdog. Now here he goes against Marquez, and if he gets past Marquez tonight, the plan later this summer is to fight Eric Morales. Is he really so good? that he can go through the best three featherweights of the past 10 years in fewer than nine months? He thinks he is, and he might well be. Or as the great Mae May West once said, too much of a good thing is wonderful. This kind of wonderfulness is rare in boxing, in the big, big bucks boxing era that we have today, where the economic imperative is to milk the golden cow slowly very very slowly so the irrepressible Pacquiao is trying something that is bold that is ambitious that is dangerous and may even be foolish for him Jim this is the second leg of the featherweight triple crown and if you thought that Mexican and Mexican-American fight fans were enthusiastic, what's going on behind us right now and causing all this noise is a spontaneous Manny Pacquiao pep rally here in the arena. So that's part of what Emmanuel Juan Manuel Marquez will be going up against tonight is all this enthusiasm. But Marquez, although he's relatively unknown outside the boxing world, is only an 8-5 underdog in the fight, despite all of Pacquiao's sensational credentials. Many ringside experts behind us picking Marquez to win the fight. Why is it that Freddie Roach calls him by far the toughest fighter that we, the Pacquiao team, could have gone against? Well, I, first of all, go back to the Barrera fight. I, even though Pacquiao looked sensational and really destroyed Barrera, personally, I think there was a lot of factors that led up to that, in addition to Pacquiao being so focused at night. Barrera was going through problems with manager, promotional situations, problems with the test that he had on his head, he had to break up his training camp and leave prematurely from Big Bear. So all of those helped, plus going against a strong, focused fighter. But nevertheless, Pacquiao was very good for that fight. But in going against a guy like Marquez, who's a seasoned fighter, I think, who's still young and who's hungry for attention himself, he wants to be the new Mexican hero himself. So, and he had the ability to be a very good technical fighter who could take advantage of the mistakes that Pacquiao makes in his over-aggressiveness because he gets a little anxious sometimes and leaves himself open. So I can see why, at this stage, Freddie Roach is a little concerned about the fight. Right. Juan Manuel Marquez, strong, smooth counterpuncher, could be just the right antidote <laughs> to the stylish attacker, Pacquiao. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Manny Pacquiao against... Juan Manuel Marquez, and you'll see that Marquez at 30 is five years older, one inch taller, a one inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for the southpaw Pacquiao. He starts out in a southpaw stance, but quickly squares his shoulders because he loves to trade punches. They both weighed in a pound under the weight limit. Tonight, Marquez has put on 11 pounds to get to 136, Pacquiao 137. They're virtually equal in size. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The one Manuel Marquez, Manny Pacquiao fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. 
Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Harold Letterman drowned out by the reception for Manny Pacquiao, who has become the Philippines' global hero. You know, this is the kind of crowd that I expected that Puerto Rico versus Mexico with some kind of way the Philippines have gotten in the picture here. I mean, it's unbelievable the excitement and the epic pride that's involved in this fight. You know, a lot of fighters go to the ring like they're going to a wake. He goes to the ring like he's going to a New Year's Eve party. And a lot of fight fans would say, right now, this is the most exciting fighter in boxing. He certainly has the most excited fan following here tonight. You saw the huge grin on Pacquiao's face as he got ready to step into the ring. Now he tries to change to the game face to get ready for Marquez. The first time I saw a fighter come to the ring shaking hands with his fans as he's going into the ring. Well, one of the things they have to worry about is that he's loving every minute of this and wants to celebrate every second of it to the max. And he's a party animal to begin with. And now the crowd responds against the picture of Marquez, which appeared on the big screens as he comes into the house. So despite the prominence of Mexican and Mexican-American population in the Southwest and in the general geographic area of Vegas, this appears to be a Manny Pacquiao crowd tonight. Well, you know, Jim, uh, many Mexican and Mexican-American fans love Pacquiao because of his relentlessly aggressive style. Uh, and in fact, you know, the Philippines and Mexico both share a common heritage, both being ruled by the Spanish for centuries, uh, many Spanish surnames in the Philippines. So there is some commonality there. Now Marquez's fans get to make their statement. Emmanuel, what an atmosphere. Uh, I love it. I was going to say the same thing that Larry just said, that a lot of the Mexican fans identify a lot yeah. with Pacquiao more so than they mock his. In fact, I have a Mexican friend down in San Diego who said to me the other day, once he knocks out Marquez, Manny's Mexican too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens as we go to a smiling Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the universally recognized featherweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Murad Muhammad's M&M Sports. In association with Top Rank Incorporated and the MGM Grand of Las Vegas. And sponsored by PLDT Global. Sanctioned by the WBA and the IBF and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman John Bailey. Executive Director Mark Ratner. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be... Bert Clements, Guy Jutras, and John Stewart. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, working in the 163rd time in a world title bout, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with white and officially weighing 125 pounds. His professional record stands at 38 victories, including 29 knockouts with only two defeats and one bout even. From the tuna capital of the world, General Santos City, Philippines, here's the former WBC World Flyweight Champion. Former IBF World Super Bantamweight Champion and the recognized People's Featherweight Champion of the World, Manny Pacman And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with red. And his official weight is also 125 pounds. 
He has a professional record consisting of 42 victories, including 33 knockouts and only two defeats. Damas y caballeros de Ciudad de México, the reigning, defending WBA IBF featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel. Gentlemen, we were all the rules in the dressing room. Here's the regla de Camerino. I want a good, clean fight. Pina pelea limpia. La truza aquí, un poquito alta, a little high here. Yours are okay. A little bit high too, but punches here are good. Give me a good, clean fight. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. The first fight turned out to be more of a uh, water fountain fight. Let's see if this one is the water cooler fight. We were anticipating not since the early days of mike tyson have there been as many gym legends surrounding a fighter as is the case now for pacquiao out of the wild card gym in hollywood come stories of sparring partners with broken ribs sparring partners who went home after one day knockouts day after day in sparring none of that means anything now marquez is no sparring partner but pacquiao has great talent well, you know, it actually depends on who we're the sparring partners to. If you're fighting with top-notch guys for sparring partners, you know how to be knocking those guys out. Marquez comes out in a more offensive stance than he usually does. Both, ga both guys seem to be a little uncomfortable right now trying to get their range and get their rhythm. Deafening crowd noises. Marquez gets in a hard left hook to the body and a good right hand over the top. And a straight right hand down the pipe. Pacquiao's a southpaw. Marquez may dispense with his jab sometimes and just lead with that straight right. One of his better punches. Obviously, he's determined to make the jab work as well. And it's easier against Pacquiao than against a lot of other southpaws because of Manny's desire to square his shoulders up and trade shots. Pac Pacquiao is showing a lot more upper body movement than most southpaws that come straight in a lot. But right now, he seems to be having a problem with getting his rhythm together. At this stage here, he looks to be a little bit wide with everything he does. His body position, everything, is leaving himself exposed when he throws his punches. And he's getting picked off down the middle by Marquez, as he did on a quick left hook there. And he fires the straight left hand, and there's the punching power. As I'm looking at it, I don't know if, it was, if Marquez is really that hurt or whether he just got caught with a straight shot right down the pipe. Marquez does not appear to be hurt or dazed. No, but he's still standing in the same position to get hit with a straight punch. And he got hit with another one and he's another one. Now. He's, and hurt. Down he's hurt. He goes he's now. hurt. He's hurt. He's not moving his head at all. He's just standing in one position. This is why we use the word sensation. We are. If he doesn't move his head, he's going down again. And Juan Manuel Marquez has been down twice. And he's off balance again. Lands a good straight left. That momentarily backs Pacquiao off. But he's, he's going straight back. Third knockdown of the first round. And he caught Marquez going down. And I'm not sure Juan Manuel will be able to get up. Cortez is going to let the fight continue. 30 seconds left in the first. Marquez has been down three times already. And Pacquiao lands another huge left. And another big one. But he's not getting away from the straight left at all. There's no head movement at all. This is not the fight that Juan Manuel Marquez would have wanted. Marquez is sure. showing tremendous heart and determination to survive this round. And even if he gets past this round, I don't think it's going to change the outcome because his head is not moving. Manny Pacquiao is a storm. Juan Manuel Marquez hasn't ever seen anything like that. Who has? Manny 
Pacquiao coming at Marquez like a typhoon across the Pacific. That was the first knockdown. Here's the second one. And at this point, it was as much speed as power that was befuddling Marquez. Well, Marquez came out and tried to make a statement. He's the bigger looking fighter in the ring. Maybe he thought he would be strong and drive Pacquiao off. He paid a stiff price. Marquez's trainer, Nacho Berestain, one of the very best in the business. He tried to use that minute effectively. But now Pacquiao goes back to work, and again the fight goes to a faster pace than that at which Marquez would want the fight. If Marquez would simply move his head with uh, any bend it down or turn off to the side, anything, he could definitely neutralize a lot of what Pacquiao's doing. Because Pacquiao's hitting with one punch, a straight left hand. And Marquez leading from leading the nose profusely. profusely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a gutcher. It looks like Pacquiao must have broken that nose. May have. He got hit with two straight lefts directly on the nose. Pacquiao's upper body movement is befuddling Marquez. Not sure where to throw. And Pacquiao knows exactly where to throw. Straight left. He caught him again. And you can notice Pacquiao is not throwing right hooks or anything else. Just strictly one punch, straight left hand right through the middle. He's so fast. So explosive. Hard to stop him even when he's just throwing the one punch. Now he lands a jab over the top and a little hook. Another straight left hand. Marquez coming back with a left and a right into the zone. If it levels out, it could become a sensational fight. Marquez is making the stand of his life because this is the fight of his life. Marquez waited years for a chance to rise to the top in the division. Here was the opportunity. And in round one, Manny Pacquiao suddenly shut out the lights. Now they're gradually coming back on. Marquez fighting more of the kind of fight now we anticipated at the start. And as the pace slows, Marquez begins to look just a little more comfortable. All that blood, Manny. The blood How does it affect the fight? It definitely affects you because a lot of time, not only is bleeding outside, actually it's bleeding in, inside. He's going down the guy's breathing. as uh, messes up the breathing inside, so he's probably swallowing blood also. Not to mention, yeah, I started to say, you're swallowing blood. Straight left hand lands just under the chin. He, he's avoiding a lot of the straight punches now by dropping off to the bit to his right. Peter did that in the beginning of the fight. He wouldn't be in the situation he's in right now. Marquez lands a solid left, and another one just before the bell. And actually had a pretty good round, even considering the blood and everything else. Jinky Pacquiao, Manny's wife, as excited as all the other Filipino fans who are here. Much to shout about so far. Debra. Hi, now, may pay attention. Pay attention. Move your head, move your head. Left hand and come back at the hook. We can. Okay? Okay. All right, combinations, not one punch at a time. Combinations, you hear me? Marquez making his stand, coming back putting himself into the fight. Right. Third round of a scheduled 12. Been about five rounds worth of action in the first two. You know that first round with three knockdowns could be a 10-6 round for Pacquiao. Yes. So there's a mountain that Marquez has to fight to climb. Well, and in round two, Pacquiao got off 77 punches by CompuBox count, only 45 for Marquez, so 
It wouldn't be at all surprising if the judges gave the second round to Pacquiao as well, which would put him five points ahead in the fight. Hard body shot by Marquez. He'll want to land a lot more of those. Pacquiao's got a nice little body rhythm moving back and forth, side to side. And all the time looking for one big shot. Straight left hand. Marquez gets in a low blow with the right hand. Joe Cortez says keep him up. It would be a good idea for Manny to start using the right hand now to try to set up his left. And he does and lands one, but Marquez gets in two hard body shots. Marquez now a lot more aware of Pacquiao's speed and therefore has a little bit more of a clue how to deal with it. Pacquiao looks so strong and still. Pacquiao's trainer, Freddie Roach, one of the hottest in the sport. Hard right hand by Marquez. He did a good job with Manny, too. He's got him moving around his body all up, almost like a little Filipino version of a Mike Tyson. Well, he does a side to side brother, but he explodes out of that with that straight left. Hard left hand by Pacquiao landed flush. Freddie Roach is the sometime trainer of Mike Tyson. But by far his prize at this moment is Pacquiao. Blood coming out of Marquez's nose again after Pacquiao lands a couple more of those straight lefts. There aren't a lot of punchers who muster as much body movement over a three-round period as does Manny Pacquiao, Manny. No, he has a lot of body movement. His, his main thing is, is still he's looking for that straight left, and I think it's just a matter of time maybe before he lands it again. Crowd chanting Marquez, Marquez, Marquez as his supporters try to get him back into the fight. But when a guy comes back like this, even some of Pacquiao's supporters start respecting him. And he's actually looked like winning this round. All right, let's get some ice on him now. Don't, don't push him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You won the two rounds. You won the second and third round. Yeah. Don't let him catch you like you did in the first round. Speaking of, Push him into the ropes. Speaking of trainers, the trainer also in Marquez's corner is one of the best trainers in the game, too. And Nacho Nacho Bernstein Bernstein, doing a yeah. great, great job not only trying to coagulate the bleeding, but also in getting his fighter back into the fight. Aristain was the guru of the crafty Daniel Zaragoza during Zaragoza's long and curious career in the sport. He's had a lot of other good fighters as well. Marquez is his prize pupil of the moment. And Harold had to score the first three rounds. Okay, Jim. 29-25, two rounds to one. Manny Pacquiao. Jim, that first round was a 10-6 round. You get an extra point when you knock a guy off his feet. You get two extra points when you knock him off his feet twice. You get three extra points when you put him off his feet three times. So subtract three from 10 9, you get a 10 6 round. Danny Pacquiao, two rounds to one. Pacquiao trying to just barge through Marquez with that left hand again. You heard Beristain trying to build Marquez's confidence, telling him he's won the second and third rounds. And, you know, in my mind, I actually thought he may have won that second round. So it was quite, I thought he won the third round, but the, the second round was even questionable. Well, the point is, it's a competitive fight at this stage again, provided he can stay away from the straight left hand. Marquez now in the counter-punching style that got him here. 
And you notice that Pacquiao was throwing his left hand with so much power, he was getting off balance and was getting countered a lot with Marquez. So now he slowed up by throwing his left hand without extending it all the way where he won't leave himself exposed as much as he was earlier in the last two rounds. Larry's point is right on target. Gradually, moment by moment, they're edging toward fighting more Marquez's fight yes. than Pacquiao's fight. Absolutely. So once again, every time he throws the left hand now, Marquez is trying to counter. So round one produced the shock factor. You can say you understand. You can think you understand. I know how fast he is. I know how powerful he is. But you don't know for sure until it's in front of you. And clearly, Manny Pacquiao was faster and more powerful than Juan Mar Manuel Marquez was ready for. Since that time, Marquez has gotten his feet on the canvas. But I think he got caught with that straight left before he got adjusted to the left-handed rhythm, and he never recuperated. The second knock and the third was simply because he was still half dazed. Now he seemed to realize that he's getting hit mainly with just one punch, and he seems to be focusing on concentrating on avoiding that left hand, just like he did here. And as a result of that, Pacquiao is having a problem then because his entire style is off of the left hand. Still with his great speed, and he is able from time to time to get in, land the left, and then get back out. There's a hard right hand by Marquez that jolted Pacquiao. And Pacquiao, when jolted, wants to fight back immediately. That's a man that loves his job. punching out there is not being effective and you let him lead to you. Let's get your head moving, back him up with, with the jab and there's no combinations, okay? Okay. All right, remember, you did, that hook's a good shot for you. You go with the hook and then the uppercut behind it, okay? Okay. All right, more than one shot, you hear me? Yeah. Deep breath. All right, let's go, guys. Marquez trained in the mountains of southern Mexico. At 16,000 feet, he was running in the snow. And perhaps that kind of effort is what kept him going through the travails of the first round or two. When I trained Julio Cesar Chavez in Mexico, we trained at 8,000 and 10,000, and I thought that was ridiculous. But to get up to 16,000, oh, you can't even hardly breathe. Plus, it's always cold up there all year long. With 30 seconds remaining in round one, Juan Manuel Marquez got up at the count of six from his third knockdown at the hands of Manny Pacquiao. And at that moment, it did not look as though he would make it out of the round. Now we're into round five, and Marquez is feeling his way back into the fight. Pacquiao's initial burst of fury has now been quenched. Marquez hunting and pecking through a counter-punching exercise. Stuns Pacquiao momentarily there. Body shot by Marquez. Pacquiao says, I'll try one myself. The blood, which was a gusher in round two, has now been reduced to a trickle just from the left nostril of Marquez. And that's one of the hardest things it is is to stop a bleeding nose. It's worse than their cut. Pacquiao unmarked. Catches Marquez with the right hook. Hard right hand by Marquez. Follows up with another. Pacquiao says, I'm fine. Holds his hands in the air. Low blow by Marquez. He got away with it. Pacquiao comes back. With two big left hands, right on the button. So just as Marquez decided to get offensive, Pacquiao was able to come back with that left hand. And they're trading shots again. Marquez backing off as if to say, maybe it's not such a good idea to trade. No, but you know, Pacquiao still is such a big puncher. and got so much spirit about him.
the stage right there. Marquez is one that's controlling the fight, though. He's stronger now. He seems to be very comfortable with the way that the fight is going, and it's ended up getting his rhythm now. And we're wondering if there might be a little cut over Manny Pacquiao's right eye. There is. In the eyelid. You know, Marquez has more things that he can do. Well, Fred Perlman and Pacquiao students for that strict and straight to that. Marquez's right hand is finding the target over and over and over. He won the round big, and he's got Pacquiao bleeding from his eye. He won the round, but now he's got his confidence up, and the crowd is up now. It's a Mexican crowd now. Right hand uppercut hook from Marquez, who is back in the fight. And Larry, I can assure you, he's swallowed a lot of blood inside, too. Pacquiao looks to the heavens and crosses himself as he comes out for round six. Marquez landed 14 out of 29 power shots in the fifth round. He is fighting his way back into it on the scorecards. His punches are clean, precision punches, the kind that really creates excitement with the judges and the crowd because he always catches Pacquiao with his head straight up. In addition to being a great trainer, Nacho Beristain is an outstanding cut man, and he has stopped the bleeding in Marquez's nose. Now, cut man Lenny DeJesus will try in Pacquiao's corner to keep his fighter from suffering any more damage to the right eye. Good body shot by Marquez. Pacquiao comes back reaching with a body shot of his own. When he reaches with his hands like that, he opens himself up to Marquez's yeah, yeah, yeah. right hand counters. Pacquiao, when he attacks, he attaches with such a big lunge and a big step that it, it's great if he lands a shot, he's going to have a lot of power. And if he doesn't, he's always off balance and we can take advantage of him. That's why some people thought Marquez could win the fight. Guy up. You don't let this guy take control of the fight. You hear me? Huh? 
game. Big right hand from Marquez. Wings it over the defense of Pacquiao, which pleases his spouse so much. CompuBox numbers in the sixth round. Marquez 16 out of 41. A lot of them hard right hand shots. Manny Pacquiao landing only five out of 35 punches. So Pacquiao's offense increasingly blunted by Marquez's increasingly effective tactical boxing. Marquez's straight right hand landing with greater and greater frequency. Maybe he's the man who's going to score the knockout. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. Now, we got to remember, a fight is scored on a 10-point must system. It's not rounds. In rounds, I've got it four rounds to two. One man, one Marquez. But Pacquiao still has that 10-6 round in the first round. So in points, 56-55, Manny Pacquiao. You know, Marquez is changing up. He's shooting straight right hands, and then he's switching on. He throws a right hook around the side. So Pacquiao's putting his hand out to block for straight punches and sometimes he can hit on the side. Freddie Roach asked Pacquiao to double jab and hit him with straight left hands. Pacquiao is not confident enough to go out and execute because Marquez is countering too effectively. Marquez has so many different things he can do. Like, see, he can work effective jab, he can punch to the body, he can throw uppercuts, work, do different things. And you know, when you're a really seasoned fighter, you should be able to handle a fighter that only is effective with one punch. The fighting CPA, Juan Manuel Marquez, takes a hard left hand shot from Pacquiao. But he's warmed up now, he's, he got caught cold early. Yeah, both guys are starting to show a little wear and tear facially, too. Marquez natural rips. I got getting hit with a straight left again, but he come right back. Marquez's upper lip is badly swollen, just as is the nose flattened out. He's taking so many punches right straight down the middle from Pacquiao. But Pacquiao's right eye is bleeding a little cut at the outside of the eyebrow. And suddenly the left eye's got a little swelling. They go back and forth, chanting, cheering, challenging each other, just as the fighters do in the ring. That was a good, good move right there on Marquez's part. He dropped right up just enough for that great straight left hand, just barely missed it. But Pacquiao's left hand did get in. Yes, it did. One He's of showing them. A, a better plan of attack in this round, trying to recapture the initiative. Marquez looking to land another uppercut as Pacquiao comes in. Popping to the body. Pacquiao fans booing because they thought the punch was low. It was right on the belt line. When you see Marquez, you think of a fighter like hidden behind other top fighters for a long time. And finally got his chance. Oh, Pacquiao and landed the right to left. Marquez takes him well and stunned Pacquiao with a right hand at the bell. What a fight. Look at the consistency of Juan Manuel Marquez. Every single round he throws between 40 and 45 punches. He's like very, a metronome. Very effective, too. He's been hit that, that was good, but he's still lowering your hand. He got hit with the same body. Dropped him the first round. Be careful. Manny, listen to me. Manny, listen to me. Do not let him get you control of the fight. He's got you up. You have to back him up with the jab. All right? You keep backing him up. You back him up, and you, you keep control of this fight. You hear me? Yeah. Manny, he's getting tired. All right? Okay. You can go all night long. All right? Larry, Emmanuel, can you remember watching a man get knocked down in the first round three times and then come back to win the fight recently? I don't know when I've seen that. I can't recall. Of course, in so many fights, uh, the oh, third really? knockdown ends the fight. So I, I don't recall something like that. I'd have to go back to Ashimo and Von Durrell, probably. Lloyd Patterson and Ingemar Johansson. Yeah. <laughs> to trade knockdowns like they were punches. And it's, he's getting hit with the same punch sometimes now, but he's taking the punch now. Because he's backing up, uh, Emmanuel, he's not coming forward the way he 
started the fight walking into the punch. So he's able to shake off the power to defuse it. Yeah, I think he's had warmed up is what it basically comes down to. Before he got, he got, got caught cold. Straight on the chain. Marquez did a great job of grabbing Pacquiao and spinning him to the ropes. Cortez did a great job of stepping in before Marquez could take advantage of it. And you hear Freddie Roach from round to round pleading with Pacquiao, don't let him take control of the fight. Too late. It may have already happened. Cannot go straight back to Pacquiao. When he starts coming in with that power right jab, he's going to shoot the straight oh, 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 left oh, oh, right down the middle. You've got to bend down or either try to make him back up. You okay, never can go. go straight back. Pacquiao seems to be uh, deciding to use more of his boxing skills uh, because that one hand kind of fight and was losing its effectiveness. Round eight, the most tactical round of the fight as both fighters have been up on their toes the entire time. This round is up for grabs in the last minute. Somebody's gonna score some punches and win it. Uppercut by Marquez. Pacquiao trying to get to the chest with the left hand. Pacquiao's got a body shots by Marquez. A lot of good body movement from Pacquiao. I mean, as the fight goes on, you get almost tired and confused just with his body with him, trying to time him coming in and out. But Marquez strafes him twice with the right hand. And as Pacquiao looks off balance, Marquez scores against the ropes. Enough and to another win round right to the body. And suddenly Marquez is in position to win the round. Pacquiao gets the crowd thrilled as he Lands a body oh, shot, on, but misses oh, wildly on, with on, the left. Let's go, yeah, keep the punches up, both of you guys. More and more, Pacquiao's missing with the left, while Marquez is landing with the counter right. It looks like Marquez has won another round. Okay, you can't afford to lose any rounds because if you lose one, you're, you're going to lose the fight. Okay, we can't we can't let the judges decide this. You decide. Jab and the overhand left's working for you. Okay. Okay. Now come back with the hook for me. Okay, finish him. Manny, you've got to back this man up and be stay in control. Do not let him back you up. You hear me? Do not let him back you up and take control of the fight. You hear me? You be the boss out there, son, okay? Okay. Control the fire. Don't be too overconfident. Let's go. It's way too close. Pick it up. Well, what a great finish we're going to have. In one corner, you have Nacho Beristain telling Juan Manuel Marquez, go out there and get a knockout. In the other quarter, Freddie Roach is telling Manny Pacquiao, don't back up, do nothing but go forward. They're going to collide as round nine begins. Well, Marquez told us that he was prepared to make a war of it if it came to that. Round eight was the first round in which Marquez threw fewer than 40 punches, but he landed enough of them down the stretch of the round to appear to win it. But neither one did much punching for the most part. Pacquiao just moved around a lot. That's why I call that round easy. You know, it's funny, when Pacquiao moves around, he really doesn't box, he just moves around. And it looks like he's boxing, but he doesn't really jab or do too much. He just bounces back and forth without really boxing. Locked. Pacquiao still showing amazing energy. Good energy level. He just cannot really get his rhythm right. His punching accuracy rate has gone way down since the start of the fight. Obviously, in round one, he was landing. Recently, he has not been able to land a straight left. Yep, and when he does land it for the most part, it's not that effective as it was earlier. That punch blocked by the right glove of Marquez. Oh, bring out, bring out. Pacquiao bring out. increasingly frustrated. Block one, and then he dropped down underneath the second. You, you watch 
punch. Pacquiao is not a dangerous guy when you go to him. He's not a counter by Pacquiao. He only can punch when he's coming, bouncing forward. If you make him back up, you don't have to worry about getting counter punch. Right? Which is why Freddie Roach was telling his fighter, don't you dare back up. You yeah. must go forward the rest of the fight. Yeah, he's not a counter punch. He doesn't punch good when you back him up. He has to get set to make that bounce. But you back him up at your own risk. Yeah, but it's not too bad because he doesn't—he doesn't punch that good when you're coming at him. He, he gets set and he bounces in with that straight left, but he has to make a big lunge on it. He doesn't shoot short punches that good. I mean, so far in this round, Pacquiao seems to be outboxing Marquez. Pacquiao landing two one twos. Just to dodge Marquez's right hand, lands another left. Big grin on Pacquiao's face as suddenly he begins experiencing some of his better success. Marquez gets him with a left and knocks him back into the ropes. Pacquiao comes forward again. Blood trickling from Marquez's nose again. Hard right hand by Marquez. They trade shots at the center of the ring. And he throws his hands up as if to say, I love it, we're fighting. Okay, man. Eat, hey, brother. Yeah. Drink that. Drink a little bit. You need it. Oh, boy. Relax. Let All me, right, Manny. <coughs> Manny. Yeah? The jab and the hook is working great for you, okay? Okay. Now, now I want more. Okay? Okay. Hey, this guy's tired. Do not let him, do not let him take control of this fight. This is too close to fight right now. Manny. He's not doing too much with his left, so but be careful of it. Keep boxing him with a nice and flat, winning round after round. Copy box numbers through the ninth round show Pacquiao throwing about 100 more punches but landing at a lower percentage. Marquez with a 20-punch edge in Power Connects, 95 to 75. The harder punches, well, Pacquiao in the first three rounds, and then Marquez since then. But in the last round, Pacquiao seemed to reestablish himself as the aggressor, and that's what his trainer, Freddie Roach, has been wanting. A lot of people biting their nails on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> a lot of people biting their nails on the other yeah, side of the river. Yeah, Murad Mohammed, the promoter of Pacquiao, is biting his nails. Big time. It was Murad Mohammed who elected to take the gamble of choosing an extremely ambitious fight schedule for Pacquiao in the wake of his big victory over Barrera. To go straight from Barrera to Marquette. And then if he wins, to go on to Eric Morales. Trying to dispose of the top three featherweights of the last 10 years in nine months. But it's gotten rough here. After a blazing and glorious first round in which Pacquiao knocked Marquez down three times, Marquez may be within range of coming back to win the fight. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Marquez answers immediately with the right. They get ready to trade again. Fight comes alive. Pacquiao's hand speed coming back. Suddenly, he's more aggressive. He's finding his range again with that straight left again. Blood trickling from Marquez's nose. Remember that judges sometimes score blood. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Marquez backing up on the defensive. Pacquiao suddenly more comfortable than at any time since the early round. Yeah, it seems like Marquez has used all of his strength trying to just get back into the fight after taking that pound in the first round. And at this stage here, he may be starting to weaken again because he's been just fighting so hard to get back into the fight. Plus all of that blood that he's probably been swallowing too. That's taking this effect. Bring it This is over the top of the left hand. And he's probably still down a fully recuperated from that first round pounding. Marquez power pawing at his nose with his glove. 
A sign that the bleeding is bothering him again. Hard left hand by Pacquiao lands flush again. And just as you said, Emmanuel, he's dialing it in. He's finding the rain. Lands again. Marquez misses with one right, now lands one. Gets Pacquiao into the corner. Did he hurt you? Okay, let's get some ice. It's 11th round. You're, you're, you're almost there. Six more minutes and you'll win. Hey, relax for me. Give me, right, give me a chance. Manny. All right? Now, you're destroying this guy when you go to him. You're destroying him when you go to him with the one-two, right? Okay. All right, now let's finish up, okay? Okay. Body and head. You hear me? Okay. Manny. It's round number 11, son. Suck it up for me, okay, son? Okay. Come on, baby, let's do it! Come on! Copy box numbers from the 10th round show Pacquiao landing 10 out of 17 power shots. Substantiating the point that Emmanuel Stewart made, he dialed in the left hand again, found the range, landed his big shots for the first time since early in the fight. Harold, how do you have it through 10? You know, it's a, it's a back and forth fight. At the end of round six, I thought it was pretty darn close. But round seven, eight, nine, and 10, I just like Manny Pacquiao's left hand. I thought he was the aggressor. I thought his left hand was doing more damage. It was landing sharper. He was the cleaner puncher. 96, 91, six rounds to four, Manny Pacquiao. He's got that big point lead because of that 10 6 first, first round. It's very possible Marquez needs a knockout to win this fight. And perhaps reckoning or recognizing that his fighter might be weakening, Nacho Berestein didn't make that point between rounds, instead saying, hang in there for six more minutes. Both fighters looked exhausted after the 10. Letting it show here. Steps inside, lets his hands go again. Marquez pops him with a perfect right hand in return. Pacquiao's left, Marquez is right. They'll go down the stretch, trading those shots. is holding his mouth tells you how much he's bothered by the blood coming out of yeah, his nose. He's been fighting through a lot of pain from the, after the first round. Oh, what a big right hand by Marquez. Pacquiao took it pretty well. This round, at this point, he's been able to neutralize Pacquiao's left hand. And once he neutralizes the left hand, he's neutralized everything. Before tonight, Juan Manuel Marquez had never participated in the kind of dramatic slugfest which typified the great careers of his two Mexican countrymen, Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. Now he's got one. Question is, can he come back and win it? Yeah, but I think win or lose, he's made his mark among Mexican fans for showing the courage and the fortitude to put himself back into this fight. I feel like giving them both the standing away. And I believe he won this round. Hey, it, it's, if you, you're going to win this, it's an incredible victory. It didn't look like you're going to win, but you got it now. First round? All right, Manny. This is your round, son. We need this round badly. Manny, all right? You got to put him on his ass this round. You hear me? Okay. Now, Manny, look to the double left hand. Do not let him be first. Okay, you have to be first. 
Don't, don't, don't wait for nothing now. He is trying to go don't, after don't, him. You're up, you're up by three points. On, We're winning this fight. Both fighters believe they can win this fight if they win this round. Which fighter has something left? The crowd is on its feet at the MGM Grand. And some of them in the higher seats are down, are bound to stay standing throughout the round. Freddy Roach wants to take nothing for granted. He asked Manny Pacquiao to go knock Marquez out. Marquez starts out the round, landing big shots. wants to box his way through the round, try to win it and take his chances with the scorecards. Pacquiao's trainer told him he couldn't afford to be satisfied with that. Perhaps because he knows that his fighter only fights at his best when he's going forward and attacking. Condition, highly motivated, highly skilled athletes, both with great hearts. Two fighters giving you everything they've got. Two real fighters from their guts. Both can box, both can punch, both have the hearts of champions. This is a good fight here, and, and, and I was just wondering if Marquez hadn't been so badly physically damaged the first round, this would have been one tremendous fight. Even though it's been good as it is, it would have been even better, I felt. No, I, I feel the knockdowns in the first round made the drama that we're watching. And both guys are in great condition, too. 30 seconds to go. no other candidate for fight of the year not at this moment we'll see what happens in the rest of 2004 but nothing in the first five months of 2004 can compare with this fire against fire down the stretch Pacquiao's left Marquez is right last chance to make a statement as the bell gets ready to rent Pacquiao winning a close fight. Harold, how'd you finish up? <laughs> okay, Jim. I thought Manny Pacquiao pulled out that 12th round, but certainly I thought one Manuel Marquez won the 11th. 115, 110, seven rounds to five, Manny Pacquiao. I mean, Jim, that 10 6 round was just impossible to overcome. One Manuel Marquez, a sensational, gutty performance. Winning rounds three, four, five, and six. I, I thought Pacquiao came back very strict, uh, very well in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. And then, you know, they split the final rounds. So, 115, 110, Pacquiao. Keep in mind as you listen to that 115, 110 scorecard from Harold that he scored rounds seven, eight, nine, and ten all for Pacquiao. I think it, the, those were difficult rounds to score. It might be closer on some cards. Bert Clements of the United States is one of the three judges. He scored Morales Ayala 117-11 for Morales. It was an easy fight for Eric. Guy Jutra, notable fight. Ayala Tapia scored 115-114 for Ayala. And Ayala was indeed the winner of that fight. And now John Stewart of New Jersey, who scored Jones Tony for Roy Jones, which was indeed correct that evening.
You know, it's amazing sitting here watching the crowd excitement with featherweights when 10, 15 years ago, nobody even thought that you would have featherweights all on one. TV. But then there came a little guy named Nassim Hamed. And and he created the mold of the featherweight slugger. Yeah. And then along came the next featherweight slugger, Manny Pacquiao. And tonight, in the first round, Manny Pacquiao stunned Juan Manuel Marquez. And to the shock of everyone at ringside, knocked Marquez down three times in the first round. There was a moment when you didn't think Marquez was going to effectively get up from that third knockdown, but he did. He survived the last 30 minutes or 30 seconds of the first round. By rounds five and six, Marquez was coming back and was winning the fight, or at least winning rounds, knocking Pacquiao back with his right hand, avoiding the left. But by the latter stages of the fight, Pacquiao began to land his straight left hand again and brought the blood back out of Marquez's apparently broken nose. In the 11th round, they traded shots as both fighters tried to muster a knockout shot to close things out. And then they both fought their way evenly, more or less, through the 12th. Maybe Pacquiao won it with some big left-hand shots in the middle of the round. And Manny is the likely winner as we get ready for the scorecards, it would appear, because of the 10-6 first. Let's go to Michael Buffer and find out who won. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, after 12 great featherweight rounds, we go to the scorecards. John Stewart scores it 115 to 110 for Pacquiao. Guy Jutra scores it 115 to 110 for Marquez. And Bert Clements scores the bout. 113-113, a three-way split. The bout is a draw. Both fighters keep their respective titles. Emmanuel Stewart, we have a majority draw, and we have one of those 13 ways of looking at a Blackbird-type scoring situations because there's a wide variance here. Judge John Stewart had Pacquiao winning 115-110, and Judge Key Jutra had Marquez winning 115-110. That means they were 10 points apart in their scorecards. Meanwhile, Burt Clements, who had the final score 113 to 113, scored the first round 10-7 for Pacquiao, not 10-6. How can you score 10-7 in a three-knockdown round? Well, a lot of the judges don't even know about a 10-6 round. You know, don't forget, Harold is, <laughs> and studies the book all the time because he makes his living doing that. Where, you know, these guys are judges, they should know, but a lot of them probably didn't know that. You're but, looking at CompuBox numbers uh, for what became a draw. Keep talking, but, What bothers me a lot is the fact it was so much disparity. If it had been close, like 112 up to 114, but 110, 115 one way, 110, 115 the other way, that seems to be a problem right there. Marquez landing more power punches. Pacquiao is stuck with a draw after having knocked his man down and almost out three times in the first round. Larry Merchant stands by with the Filipino star. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations on an outstanding fight, Manny. How do you feel about the decision? Anong pakiramdam mo? Anong naisip tungo sa decision nato? Ah, uh, masama ako, masama lob ko dahil uh, dapat panalo ako sa laban. I'm I'm disappointed. I should have won this fight. Did you think you were going to knock him out in the first round? Sa tingin mo nung unang round de eh, patutulugin mo na ba? Um, sa tingin ko pero wala nang oras eh. Na abutan three, tatlong bisis lang siya bumagsak. That's what I thought, but there was not enough time. I know he went down three times, but there was not enough time. So you were surprised how strongly he came back despite the knockdowns, despite the fact that he was bleeding in his nose and his mouth? Nagulat ka ba na nakabaway pa siya kahit napapagsak mo, kahit na dumudugo yung ilong niya hanggang sa bibig? Nakarecover nga siya dahil natigilan ko siya ng follow-up kasi yung pa ako sumakit nung third round hanggang fourth round hanggang eight rounds sumakit yung pa ako hindi ako makagalaw nang mabili so nakabawi siya hindi ako makagalaw yeah he wasn't able to move yes he was able to recover because he couldn't move I I couldn't move because my my foot was hurting on the third and the fourth and the eighth round how how did you hurt your foot as you know before 
Baka daw sumakit ang paa mo. Paano mo nasaktan ng paa mo? Ah, uh, may sakit na to nung ano pa napag-insayo ko na two, two, one week before the ano, the, the fight, uh, two weeks before the fight, uh, two, may sakit na. Two weeks before the fight, during his practice, he hurt his foot already and he was already hurting. I got uh, na slip ako na ano na natapilok sa sparring. Oh, uh, he slipped and fell. Do you take any uh, solace from the fact that you got a draw in his territory, his hometown? Uh, ano, nanidiskumpiyo na, 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 mo ba na dahil siya eh, nakakuha ng door dito sa kanyang teritoryo? Um, alam mo, dapat panalo ako sa laban eh. At uh, siyempre eh. Marami namang taong ano nakakita so saksi sila. So dam lamang ako sa puntos eh. You know I should have won the fight. A lot of people saw it and I'm ahead of points too. You were supposed to fight Eric Morales if you won this fight. Since it's a draw, do you want to do a rematch? Dapat nalabanan mo si Morales pag nanalo ka dito. Pero draw, sa tingin mo gusto mo pa rin mag-rematch? Um, yan ang magandang gawin para Uh, ano, uh, doon malaman ko sino talaga ang panalo sa dalawa. So, uh, kailangan siguro mag-remat. So, next time, uh, wala na siguro itong sakit ng, ng, ng paako. There should really be a rematch. So, they will know who really is the best between the two of us. Who, who really is the winner between the two of us. Thank you very much, Manny, for a terrific fight for all of our fans. Jim? All right, Larry, and in the wake of this great, great fight, of course, the scorecards will now be a big part of the story. Amazingly, John Stewart scores the fight 115-110 for Manny Pacquiao. That score very much like the score that our Harold Letterman had. And just as Harold Letterman gave rounds 7, 8, 9, and 10 all to Pacquiao, so too did John Stewart. Meanwhile, Guy Jutra did give the first round to Pacquiao 10-6 and proceeded to give 11, or excuse me, 10 of the next 11 rounds, 10 of the next 11 rounds to Juan Manuel Marquez, including rounds 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, and 12, all in a row, all for Marquez. Interestingly enough, I don't see that as a huge controversy. I think it was a tough fight to score, and I could see an argument either way in favor of what Jutra said or in favor of what Stewart said. To me, the biggest controversy, Manny, is that Judge Burt Clements scored the first round 10-6, or 10-7 instead of 10-6. If he scores at 10-6, which is the norm, Pacquiao wins the fight by a point. Yeah, he would have won the fight by a point, but it was a very good fight still. And I still, to some degree, still sympathize with Marquez for fighting under that tremendous handicap all the way through. And I think it will be a great rematch. That's all we can look forward to. To, say. But to make one correction, when they announced that both guys kept their titles, that's not the case. Pacquiao did not have a title. Right. He was just considered by the public uh, as being the champion because of the great fight with Barrera. But both titles are still kept by Marquez. He still retains the titles in the situation. I want to ask our judge uh, and ringside scorer Harold Letterman uh, one thing which he'll give you in a voiceover answer. Harold, your thoughts about Judge Burt Clements scoring the first round 10-7. How bad an irregularity is that? Well, Jim, you, you know... The thing is, is that some judges think that if they go 10-6, the other guy just doesn't have a chance to catch up. And, and that's the problem. I mean, you really have to look at it logically. He did knock him off his feet three times. Uh, Pacquiao did deserve a 10-6 round, but some judges are just afraid to have one guy too far ahead, and I think that's what Clements was thinking. And maybe it's poetic justice. Maybe at the end yeah. of the day, just as was the case <laughs> with... Gaddy Ward the first time around. The scoring irregularity, which creates a draw, is the right thing because I'm not sure that either guy deserved to lose the fight. Well, sometimes the judges give rounds to a guy because he did better than he did in other rounds, even though he really didn't win the round. But they like to have it going down a stretch where it's a little bit in reach where you still could win the round and win the fight if you could win a few rounds. They like to have it a little bit left like that when they finish up. But it was a great finish. The last fact that one guy won the 11th round, I think, and most Marquez won on most scorecards. 12th round, most gave it to Pacquiao. So it means it was still drama all the way to the last two rounds. They were switching back and forth. So it was a good fight. The very classy, very gracious Juan Manuel Marquez has waited all this time to talk to our Larry Merchant. Let's go to him now. Thank you again, Jim. Congratulations on an outstanding fight. What happened in the first round? Felicidades, una pelea grande. ¿Qué pasó en el primer round? Eh, bueno, en el primer round entramos un poco, un poco desconfiados. No vi su mano izquierda. 
me la conectó tres veces y pero gracias a Dios nos levantamos y supimos llevar la pelea adelante. In the first round I went in there not uh, overconfident and he caught me with the right hand but uh, we we survived that and then uh, we thought we won. When you say you went in overconfident it appeared that you were more aggressive in that first round because maybe you thought you were stronger and so that you got hit by punches perhaps that you didn't see. Was that the plan to go right at him in the first round and before you reverted to your normal style? Si, si entraste muy confiado y entonces te agarró, el plan tuyo era a entrarle y, y bien agresivo desde el primer round? No, el plan era, era este, boxear, que no nos conectara su mano izquierda, bueno, pues nos sorprendió y de ahí lo tuvimos mucho cuidado con su mano izquierda, bueno, de todos sus golpes, pero más peligroso es su mano izquierda. No, the plan was to box him real carefully, but I got caught early. After that, I tried to avoid his left, and I just made the best of it. Did you think you were going to survive while you were sitting in the corner after that round? How were you feeling? Did you think you could go 12 rounds hard at that point? Después del primer round, ¿tú, ¿tú crees que podrías sobrevivir hasta lo último? Después que estabas casi noqueado, ¿cómo te sentiste después del primer round? Bueno, este, me sentí un poco desconcertado, desconcertado, pero traíamos mucha condición, mucha preparación para, para aguantar los 12 rounds. Y yo creo que, que, yo creo que gané, gané, gané la pelea porque esa fue una decisión que, que no me pareció. De, después del primer round, pienso que me ganó un round nada más. I, I feel that after the first round I was a little disoriented, but I got into it again. I thought I won the first fight. He only won the, the first round, maybe another one. I thought I won this fight. What, what was so effective for you, do you feel, through most of the fight once you got your bearings? ¿Qué fue lo más efectivo para ti después que tú sobreviviste el primer round? Bueno, utilizamos este... Lo más efectivo fue que, que no me entrara su mano izquierda. Y de ahí nosotros conectar nuestras combinaciones que salió a la perfección. Well, the most important thing was avoiding his left hand. And after we did that, then we were able to counter punch him. Do you feel after this fight that you will get the respect from fans in Mexico especially that you really that really hasn't come to you all these years? Sientes tú que después de esta pelea vas a recibir el respeto que no te ha llegado todavía de todos los fanáticos, especialmente los mexicanos? Yo creo que esta pelea fue una gran pelea para mí y para la gente que la disfrutó. Y yo creo que, que esta pelea se la dedico a mi hijo, a mi esposa, a toda mi familia y a todos los mexicanos que me apoyaron aquí. This was a great fight and uh, I dedicate this fight to my wife and my son and all the people that uh, backed me. Do, do you want a rematch? ¿Quieres una revancha? Yo, yo creo que sí, estoy dispuesto. Estoy dispuesto, yo siento que esta pelea yo la gané. Este, un desempate porque no revancha. Empatamos, pero yo siento que yo gané la pelea. Yes, uh, uh, I don't feel I need a, a rematch because I feel I won this fight. But if we need to do it again, I feel I won it. Let's do it. Thank you very much and again for a great fight. Jim, just this. Let's go to the water cooler and talk about it for the rest of the weekend. Absolutely right. All right, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, half of the best brother team in the sport. His younger brother, Rafael, is the hard-punching king of the 118-pound division, and Marquez saved his foothold at 126 with his great comeback in the fight tonight. Here's now a special treat for you, if your favorite thing is to hear an HBO boxing announcer, in this case, Jim Lampley, taken to the backyard for a whipping. Earlier this evening, I interviewed Antonio Tarver, who next week will, for the second time, challenge Roy Jones for the 175-pound world championship, a championship that Tarver believes he won in their first fight last fall. Let's listen to what he had to say. Joining us now from his training camp in Vero Beach, Florida, is the man who will once again challenge for the light heavyweight championship of the world next Saturday night, Antonio Tarver. Antonio, thank you very much for your time. I'll start by pointing out that it had been our expectation and our plan to tape an interview with both you and Roy Jones at this moment, but for reasons I can't articulate, we've waited more than a half hour and Roy appears not to be available. Your thoughts? Well, you know my thoughts, uh, Jim. Uh, I asked the guys to look up under that rock in Pensacola that he's hiding under. I mean, whenever it's Antonio Tarver, the guy seemed to get spooked. He don't want to show up. He don't want to do his part 
when it comes to this promotion. And another thing, he's continued to try to downplay the biggest fight of his career, I might add, the biggest fight, the biggest challenge of his career, me, myself, Antonio Tarver. So he keep hollering about Mike Tyson. He keep hollering about Klitschko. But the point of the matter is he don't want to face the challenge in front of him. And that's me next Saturday, May 15th at the Mandalay Bay. I'm ready, I'm eager, and I can tell the boxing fans, don't miss it. It's going to be an explosive night of boxing. Antonio Tarver is ready to once again reclaim my crown as the light heavyweight champion of the world. Do you think he has a purpose in making you feel insulted, or do you think that it's more a matter of Roy taking for granted his superiority at 175 pounds? Roy, Roy Jones don't have any superiority at 175 pounds. And if you don't know that by now, Jim, then I'm giving you much too much, way too much credit. But uh, this guy don't have no superiority, especially when it comes to Antonio Tarver. He might have superiority over those other 49, uh, you know, fighters that he's faced before me, but there's no superiority here. All right, I'll acknowledge this much, Antonio. Although the judges chose Roy in that fight in November, I believe 70 or 80 percent of the people in the arena, the fans, believed that you had won the fight. Tell us how, in your view, you won that fight. Well, you know what, Jim? I won that fight because, you know, as you all say, that I was in the ring with Superman, the guy that was unbeatable, haven't lost as many as three or four rounds before he met Antonio Tarver. I won that fight clearly. I dictated the pace. I dominated. When you look at clean punching, effective punching, and you look at uh, ring generalship, all of the three major facets when judging a fight, I dominated in those categories. I don't know what fight you saw. I don't know what fight uh, Harold Letterman saw. But I can honestly say that the, the European connection, the, the, the international feed had me winning going away. That fight wasn't close. I beat the guy hand down. And you know what? I got a second opportunity to show the world that not only do I belong in the same echelon as the best fighters in the world today, but I belong on top. The people who think you didn't win the fight last fall would say that you might have won it had you been more aggressive when you were in the center of the ring, that you certainly hammered Roy along the ropes, but for long periods of time in the middle of the ring, you weren't active. Your thoughts on that? Well, you know what? I was the champion going in. Tell me what champion has fought as good as I fought that night and lose a championship. You know, I can think back years and years, and I don't recall one. I went in that championship fight as the champion. Roy Jones was the challenger. And you're telling me he took my title? What did Roy Jones do in the center of the ring? I mean, what did Roy Jones do throughout the whole entire fight? He hit a lot of glove. And when you say, shh, 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 that don't mean that you're scoring punches. I beat the guy. I busted the guy up. I left that fight looking as good as I look right now. No hands, no doubt about it. And uh, the fans in the world are going to see once again that Antonio Tarver is hungry and I'm ready to roar. I will take care of my business on May 15th. Roy Jones, you need not show up for this interview, but have your butt in place May 15th, Mandalay Bay, because I'll be there and I'll be looking you square in the face and you're going to have to go through your worst nightmare once again. This time, you're not going to get any handshakes from the judges. And Jim Lampley, put down the pom-poms, baby. Call the fight like you see it. All right, thank you very much, Antonio. You showed you. up, and we appreciate your time. No problem. All right, it's next Saturday night on HBO Pay-Per-View. Light heavyweight champion Roy Jones taking on Antonio Tarver, a rematch of their fight last November, a match Jones openly acknowledges to have been the most difficult of his career. Tarver Jones, too, your thoughts? I think it's going to be a very interesting fight, and I hope that Tarver fights, as you said, in the center of the ring this time. What made the fight so difficult to score and close? Because Tava would win at the points where Roy would say, like, I'm going to take a break now and lay in the ropes for 30 seconds. Come on, punch him. He would punch. But then when Roy would come to the center of the ring and say, let's fight a little bit, Tava cut off. In the last two rounds, I thought that Roy won those two crucial rounds. Not that he landed blows, but he was throwing punches. As Tava said, toot, toot, toot. But he wasn't doing anything. So whoever's throwing the punches wins the round. So Roy actually knew how to win the round without beating Tava. And as a result, that's how he ended up winning the decision. Incidentally, I did call it as I saw it, and Antonio's completely within his rights in thinking that I'm blind. Larry, <laughs> your thoughts? Well, I think it's conceivable that Roy Jones got some close rounds because he is Roy Jones. But nevertheless, the general feeling was, as Emmanuel Stewart just suggested, that Antonio Tarver thought he had the fight won, and he coasted in the late rounds, and he lost the fight. We know this. He can sure talk for 12 rounds. 
Hopefully this time he'll fight for 12 rounds. He's a great guy. Let's hope he puts forth another great effort next Saturday night. I strongly feel that Roy is going to come back with something memorable on his own. All right, what a night it's been. We'll have a final word on what took place in the ring here in just a few moments. Right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming programs on HBO. Fighter pushes the limit. Always victorious. Can he do it again? This is a stirring performance. 31 and 0. On to see some fireworks. 21 knockout. Terrific fight. Unstoppable at any weight. Any fighter from 154 down. Pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. Bring him and I'll take him. Is he the best pound for pound? The Marcus Chop Chop Corley wants to prove him wrong. Two of the flashiest fighters in the land. Mayweather versus Corley. Next Saturday night, light heavyweight champ Roy Jones takes on Antonio Tarver in a rematch of their fight from last November. Roy edged out Tarver by close majority decision that one, and this time looks to leave no doubts as to who's the man at 175. Tarver, of course, as you just heard, plans to leave no doubts himself. Earlier tonight, you saw rising prospect Miguel Cotto in his 20th pro fight face by far his toughest challenge yet as Lovemore and Doe kept coming at Cotto through 12 full rounds forcing the young star to fight the distance of 12 rounds for the very first time in his career. And yet, Cotto at the end was able to earn a unanimous decision with harder, sharper punching. Then, in the first round of Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez, Pacquiao knocked Marquez down three times. The third time he was down, it was for no means certain that Marquez was going to get up. But when he got up, he won 10 of the next 11 rounds on one of the three judges' scorecards to wind up earning a draw with Pacquiao. Let's see.